Hello friends, you're watching Android Tech Solutions and today in this video I'm going to show you how you can set up a IIS server in Windows EC2 instance. So first I'm going to show you how you can launch a Windows Server EC2 instance and then we are going to see how we can set up IIS server. Okay, so first of all you have to log into your AWS console. Right now I'm logged into my AWS console and then the second task is you have to choose a region. Okay, so you have to choose a region where you have to deploy a server. Now region selection will be completely, it depends upon where your customers are located or where actually you are located. Okay, so I'm choosing Oregon as my region. Then you have to click at here at the left top on services and under compute you will find EC2. And here we'll click on launch instances. Now first step is to choose an operating system. The operating system in the cloud, we call it as AMI. So first we have to choose an AMI. So here you'll, if you scroll down, you'll find Windows Server, Windows Server 2019 base operating system. Now based on your needs, you can search here also. Let's say Windows. So you'll find all the operating systems which are available like Windows Server 2019 base with containers, SQL Server. 2016. Now, based on your requirement, you can choose, choose any of these operating system. So, I will go ahead with the latest operating system available, which is uh, Microsoft Windows Server 2019. Then we have to choose set a server configuration. Now, based on our needs, like based on the application which we are going to deploy on the server or based on the traffic on the application, we have to choose a instance type. An instance type basically have your server configuration like one core CPU, one gigabyte of RAM. Okay, now based on your needs, based on your what kind of application you want to host, based on what traffic you have on your website, based on that you have to choose a instance type. So for this demo, I'm going to use T2.micro, which is basically a free, which basically comes at the free tier plan of AWS, which means we will not be charged for uh, any of the resources which we are going to use. So I'm going to go ahead with T2.micro, which has one CPU and one gigabyte of RAM. Based on your application needs, you can choose any of these instance types. Then we'll click on next. Instant details, we'll keep it as default. We don't need to customize any of these uh, details. Now, based on your application needs, we will be adding a storage or maybe, uh, I mean, we will be increasing the storage. So let's say I want to increase it to 50 gigabytes. And this is the storage. This is basically your C drive where your operating system will be installed. Okay, and in this C drive itself, you can uh, host your application or you can also attach a new volume where you can, which, which you can mount as a D drive in your server. Now, based on your needs, you can add a new volume or you can uh, increase the volume, uh, increase the size of the existing volume. So for this demo, I'm just going to keep it to 50 gigabytes. Okay, or uh, yeah, I'm going to resize it to 50 gigabytes. By default, it is set to 30 gigabytes. Next, we have to add a tag. And tag here, we'll be adding name as a tag, which will be name of our server. Let's say Windows Server. Now security group. Security group is basically our firewall. Okay, it is basically cloud, cloud firewall. So here you can find inbound rules. These are basically inbound rules. So inbound, we have 3389 open. By default, when we create, we launch a Windows instance, so by default 3389 port is open. And what is 3389? 3, 3, on 3389, RDP works on Windows. Okay, if this port is open on the security group, then we can remotely log into our server by RDP. So this is for logging into the server and we have to add another rule which will be of HTTP. Which will be of HTTP and HTTPS. So here you can find for HTTP and we'll add another rule for HTTPS. Now let's say you want to host a website uh, application on IIS web server with HTTP. So you can open HTTP ports and if you want to host it with HTTPS, then you have to open HTTPS port. But if you want to configure with HTTPS, so you also need a SSL certificate. Okay, you have to purchase a SSL certificate from uh, let's say GoDaddy or Let's Encrypt. Okay. 
then we'll click on review and launch and then we'll click on launch and while launching it is looking for a key pair and what is the key pair key pair is basically a password through which we are going to log into our instance so we have to create a key pair and this key pair basically consists a decrypted string okay oh sorry i mean a encrypted string that later we are going to decrypt to get the password to log into our server so let's say the name of the file key pair file can be anything so we are going to keep windows server and we have to download this key pair and this key pair basically consists of our password then launch instance then view instances so now the instance is in running state so once it is in running state we have to wait for at least 2 to 4 minutes for instance to provision okay right now if we try to connect to the instance let's say uh, so this is our instance so i'll just right click over here and we'll go to the third option which says connect and then we'll go to the second option which is rdp client and and here here you can find the information to connect to your instance you can find the public dns name the username and the password so first we have to generate the password to log into the instance so i will i will click on get password so it it is asking us to wait for 4 minutes okay so when we we'll deploy the windows server it takes 2 to 4 minutes to provision so i'll skip that part okay after waiting for couple of minutes now let us try to connect to our instance so we'll choose the instance then right click on it then we'll click on connect then we'll go to rdp client and then here we'll click on get password now once it is ready so you will be able to see this option which says you have to browse your key pair you have to upload your key pair which you use to launch your instance so here we are going to click on browse and you have to go to your downloads folder where your key is located which will be a .pm file you have to upload this file and then here you will find an option of decrypt password so once you decrypt it so you will find a find your password to log in to your instance to your windows server instance now you have to log in to the windows server instance so if you are in a windows machine so you can use this software remote desktop client which is basically a rdp client software or if you are in a linux operating system so i have given a link in the description so that link is about, that uh, actually that video is about how you can log into a windows server instance using a linux based operating system so first it is looking first it is looking for the computer where you have to provide the server ip server public ip or the public dns name so we are going to copy the public dns name and we are going to paste it here then connect then it is going to ask you for the username and password so the username is administrator and the password this is the password which is generated so here it will ask you for the host verification certificate so we'll click on yes and now we are connected to our windows server instance here you can see we are logging into it okay now we are logged into our windows server instance now to configure web ias web server we have to go to at the left left uh, bottom you have to click here and here you will find server manager so we'll click on server manager so after logging into the server you have to click at the left bottom you have to open server manager and server manager will take like 10 15 seconds to gather some information and once it is ready then we can click on add roles and features so right now it is not available it is uh, collecting some information yeah now it is ready so we'll click on add roles and features 
and uh, for the next couple of steps we are just going to hit next 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 and here in server roles you have to scroll over down you will be able to find here web server IIS and then we have to click on add features then next and now based on your needs you can install some additional softwares with IIS like .NET framework then next next and and here you will find some other services which you can install for IIS like FTP server okay HTTP redirection based on your needs you can do the configuration for now I am going to keep everything default next and install so it is going to take one to two minutes for the server to install the uh, set up the web server Okay, now here you can see installation succeeded. So, IIS server is successfully installed. Now, just to check it, we will open our Internet Explorer inside the Windows Server instance itself. And here we will type localhost. And when you type localhost, you will be able to see the default page of IIS server, which means we have successfully configured a IIS server in our Windows Server instance. Now, just to verify whether it is accessible over the internet, so we are going to go to the AWS console and then we'll go to EC2. Then we'll go to running instances. And we are going to copy the IP address, public IP of uh, IP of the instance, and we are going to open it in a new tab. And once we do that, we are able to see the default page of IIS web server, which confirms that IIS server is working in our Windows Server instance, plus it is accessible over the internet. Now let's say when you type your IP address on the browser, if you are not able to access it, so first thing to check is you have to go to you have to click on the instance you have to go to security and then you have to click on the security group just in the security group inbound you have to make sure port 80 is open okay if you are setting up with http so you have to make sure port op 80 is open if it is not then click on edit inbound rules let's say i'll delete this rule and add it again so you have to click on add rule and here you have to search for HTTP and you have to set it to anywhere and save rules and once you do that you will be able to access it if still you are not able to access it then you have to check the you have to log into the server and you have to make sure that IIS server is accessible or is successfully installed okay the best way to check whether it is installed or not you can simply type on your Internet Explorer inside the instance localhost and if this page pop ups it means IIS server is configured successfully. Now to do any kind of configuration you can search for administrator IIS administ sorry administrative tools okay here you can find administrative tools. and here you will find internet information services manager IIS manager so we'll just click on it we'll open it and now depending on your use case depending on what kind of website or application you want to host you can do the configuration from here so thank you guys for watching this video do like this video and subscribe to my youtube channel for more amazing tutorials